Hi there, I'm Lee, welcome to Iron Mine Blocks. In today's video, we're gonna be building a POS mining box. So this is gonna be a mini ITX staking box and we're gonna be building it together and then it's gonna be used for staking coins and earning an income. I've said a mining box because we can also use this in the future for proof of work mining. Now a few of you guys might not know or understand the difference between proof of stake and proof of work. Very simply, proof of stake is where you keep coins in your wallet and you keep the wallet running 24 seven. Over time, you'll earn a small income. Proof of work, many of you guys have already been familiar with, which is uh, ASIC mining, GPU mining, and that's where you're kind of doing hard work by hashing to secure the network. So this is mostly gonna be for proof of uh, stake, and that's what we're gonna be focused on, but like I said, we can also do a little bit of mining um, should we wish to. So I'm gonna be doing a mini mining uh, build, or post build, should I say. Keep getting um, uh, muddled up on those terminologies. But um, that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So first of all, let's take a look at the components for this build. So because our POS box is gonna be running 24 seven, there was a couple of um, features or characteristics that I wanted from the uh, box itself. So of those, they are, I wanted it to be low power, low noise, I wanted it in a really small form factor, and also wanted it to be built um, really kind of almost as cheap as possible within those other um, kind of uh, criteria. So for this POS box, you could really use any home desktop PC or laptop, that would also work fine. Um, but really I wanted to kind of um, build something, so that's, that's what I get um, a lot of uh, fun out of. So that's why I'm gonna be building this one as a dedicated uh, POS box rather than just using some existing hardware. One of the other things uh, that I wanted uh, from this is because it's gonna be running 24 seven, I didn't want to use one of my other machines that I constantly, um, or on a regular basis, I have them restarted. I'm doing upgrades, changing uh, various pieces of software. So I wanted a completely dedicated box. So that's why I'm building this as a individual unit on itself rather than using uh, any other hardware that I have here. So this is the hardware that we're gonna be using for this uh, POS box build. The case is a Cooler Master Elite 110. The power supply is a Be Quiet Pure Power 10, 350 watts. It's a bronze rated power supply. The motherboard is a Biostar A68N 5600 and that has a integrated quad core A10 CPU. RAM is just a DDR3 stick. It's an eight gigabyte stick. Um, I have picked that up from another build. A uh, four gigabyte stick would also be fine. And the hard drive is a Crucial BX100. It's a 250 gigabyte SSD. So just talking about each one of the components in a little bit more detail, uh, just explaining the reasons why I chose these particular pieces. So the Cooler Master Elite case, so it's an ITX case, and that's exactly what I was looking for, something with a small form factor. And this one, to be fair, isn't the smallest form factor, but one of the reasons why I chose it, in terms of overall size, and sorry about the noise, is that it supports a full size uh, PSU. So sometimes you'll find with these ITX cases, they only support the uh, short form factor, um, or the smaller power supplies. So I wanted this because it, uh, it can accommodate a full size uh, power supply. Also, it had a bit of extra room uh, for GPUs, and this can also support three full sized hard drives. So that was the primary reasons why I chose it. There's a couple of um, expansion uh, slots on the side, USB 3, for example. So it made um, accessibility a little bit easier. It doesn't have any space for uh, CD-ROM drives or anything like that, but I'm just gonna be using a USB drive just for the initial uh, configuration. So also the price is very good. Um, I think it was a little over 30 pounds uh, from memory. So um, quite a lot for um, a small amount of money. So that was the reason why I chose that case. Next up is the motherboard. So the reason why I chose this one again was obviously the ITX form factor. That's what I was looking to work with. It had a integrated CPU and the motherboard had a few other features that I uh, thought was desirable. So on this motherboard, it supports full size uh, DDR3 RAM. Um, I had some RAM already, so that, that was a good combination. It also has a integrated uh, CPU, and that brings the overall uh, cost down for the, for the whole motherboard and um, uh, CPU. When you buy them separately, you go over 100 pounds. Um, this together 
that was um, a little over 60 pounds so that was quite good one of the other things that i liked about this as well was that it had a full size 16 times pci express slot so we can use that in the future to add in a graphics card there are a few other little bits and pieces such as the hdmi built in um, that also made it quite um, quite a good purchase so a good all-round uh, motherboard and i think that's going to do well the only slight concern is the power of the integrated cpu I'm a little bit concerned it might not have quite enough power if I'm running multiple wallets, um, but we'll just have to see how that goes. So next up is the power supply. It's a Be Quiet power supply. I've not used uh, this particular brand before, but I'm hoping it's gonna uh, provide exactly what I need. So primarily I was looking for something that was low cost, quiet and also efficient so this is only a bronze rated power supply i could have got a gold rated power supply but the gold supplies were almost double the price of this and um, this coming at uh, about 35 pounds um, it was an x display one but i don't think that's going to make um, any difference um, the extra efficiency of a gold rated power supply didn't justify the cost um, i think i'd only be saving about five watts um, over that period of time so it wouldn't really um, justify itself then the only other downside to this power supply as well is that it's not modular um, i would have preferred a mod modular power supply but again um, due to pricing so that's why i went uh, with this power supply so i'm hoping it's going to deliver exactly what we need uh, primarily it's going to be efficient enough and quiet so that's why i chose that okay guys let's get going here so starting with the case first of all and like i said this is a brand new case to me i've not used it before but Hopefully it'll come apart fairly straightforward. Let's do just undo the thumb screws, which are actually over tightened. So let's get the screwdriver on those. Just using this mini screwdriver, use it for other little jobs like mobiles and things like that. So it's quite good, quite handy. Okay, so screws are removed. Should be able to take this cover off. So now you can see a little bit more of the uh, internals. Actually, if I start from the back, so obviously your power supply is gonna go be mounted there and fit internally. On the bottom, we're gonna have our motherboard tray. There's a, I think it's a, actually I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's a 120 mil fan on the front there. I'm pretty sure this bezel pops out maybe. So I'll have a look at that in a moment. And then kind of a, along the top, you've got this um, hard drive uh, kind of a, mounting and also to the side uh, for your drives as well and like i say with your pci express uh, graphics card expansion slots to the side there so that is what we are working with so it makes sense i think to fit the uh, the motherboard and everything first and then the, the power supply can go in last i think i'm also going to remove this tray uh, to get a little bit easier access with our hands and stuff so inside we're going to the front connectors I'm just going to place these all to the outside of the case for the time being just to kind of clear up the area where we're fitting the motherboard. Also the fan has got a Molex connector and also like a pass through and a, uh, a free pin adapter also. I'm just going to kind of tuck that to the front there and just kind of hold that out of the way uh, just to kind of clear up that space in the middle if it stays. So now you can see our kind of work area is um, a little bit cleaner make it a bit easier for fitting our motherboard. So I'll just pop the case out the side for a moment. So this is our ITX form factor motherboard and um, it's quite cute. This is actually the first time I have had a ITX uh, motherboard to their hand. So you can kind of see it's virtually hand sized, um, nice and square. So we have our PCI Express slot, like I said, it's a full time slot, our DDR3 RAM slots, power supply, sorry, power connector for the CPU, main connector, uh, a few SATA ports, and on the IO port, there is a PS2 keyboard and mouse, HDMI port, VGA port, USB 3, USB 2, Ethernet, and your audio connectors. So this is what we are working with, and um, yeah, let's continue on with the build. So just gonna fit in the standoffs first, so they just screw into the bottom of the case. There's um, four placements, I'm not too sure if you can see there due to the uh, lighting, but it's kind of one in each corner for the standoffs, and that obviously correlates for one in each corner, more or less, barring this one on the motherboard. Sorry, hopefully this is staying in focus for you guys. 
So a standoff syringe, now we need our, our IO shield. Just gonna kind of roughly fit that and then give it a little bit of pressure. It's actually upside down, so you need to fit it the right way around. Mm, okay, so there's one extra thing we need to do. So on the I.O. shield, the, um, the audio connectors have not been punched out. So I just need to push those uh, through and get them out of the way. Okay, so that's our motherboard installed and secured. Quite compact and tidy in there. And the next up is installing the RAM. So we're just going with a single eight gigabyte stick. Next up, I think we're gonna mount our SSD. Then I'm gonna do the um, external connectors and then the power supply last, I think. So ready to mount our hard drive. And there's a couple of different options we can go with in terms of placing the drive. So we originally had this rack mount over here so we could place it along the top, or there's a couple of different options down the side. I think I'm gonna put it in this bottom lower side here. Um, I think it will give it quite a good clearance uh, for any future sort of upgrades with the graphics card and stuff because it's only obviously thin. There's not going to be much uh, vibration or anything, you know, because it's an SSD. So it's supplied with some rubber grommets and we just fit those in. But like I say, the vibration is not really an issue. Um, but there's, it's really the only way to fit them in any case. So I'm going to fit it down in this uh, part down there. And that'll kind of free up, for for example, if we do want to use any hard drives in the future, we can mount those maybe on the top for two full-size drives like that. So let's continue on with that. These are just going to fit these in place. So they just kind of poke through and then slot slide down. So that's those little grommets in place. And then we have, they've provided some kind of little, these uh, slightly taller screws. So they have a, part with a thread and part with that so they should uh, fit through and um, go into the drive so perfectly so that's cool that's the first one in so it makes lining up the others much easier so this piece on the back is for the power supply I'm just going to remove that because we want to fit that to the power supply before it all goes back on so I'm just going to do that uh, preemptively and just to get it out of the way Okay, so now just the uh, front panel connectors, reset switch. So this board is quite obvious. I've had other boards where it's a complete guessing game to where the connectors are. So now we have the front panel audio connector. So that goes in at the back of the board. I don't think I'm ever gonna use that. I'm kind of debating whether to even plug it in. This uh, front USB connector and the audio connectors, I think I'm just gonna leave them detached because I'm never really gonna use them. It is only a post box, so I think I'm just gonna leave these completely uh, detached. Um, they're not necessary, and they're just gonna kind of complicate, not complicate the build, but the, the cable management is, is ugly. So I'm just gonna keep them tucked out of the way. Uh, that's gonna work better for me. I just have to remember that I'm uh, not gonna be using the USB ports. So as I was saying, this front panel, um, I thought it did come off and it does. So if you just grab it at the bottom, it's like a little hand part and you can just uh, give it a little tug and it should uh, come free. So there you can see the other connectors. So I think with the audio and the USB free connector, I think I'm gonna pull them back through and then kind of leave them in this gap between the, the front panel and then the, the actual case. Okay, so I've just tucked those cables out of the way. You can see it's a lot cleaner looking inside there now. So I've got the hard drive SATA cable connected. So I had to just pull it through the front and uh, just to make it a little bit tidier in there. When it comes to the power supply connectors, I'm not sure whether we're gonna be able to make it as tidy, but it's not the, the biggest concern. It just you know makes it look better uh, once the build is completed. 
This is the power supply that we're going to be using. So I didn't consider it at the time, but it's quite nice. Even though it's a wired power supply, at least all the cables, they're all black sleeved uh, cables. So that's going to make it look uh, quite good overall. Uh, like I said before, it's not really the primary purpose of it. I don't, you know, looking good is just an extra uh, kind of bonus, but it's not the most essential thing. Uh, the problem is probably going to be trying to tie in enough of these cables away um, just to keep it looking a little bit tidier. But let's uh, continue on and we'll shoe fit this power supply. So we've just got this metal sleeve that goes on to the back of the uh, power supply. And what that means is that when we fit the power supply, it's just going to have a slight outer edge protruding. So we're just going to screw this on. So I'm going to fit the power supply so the fan is inverted or it's upside down. I prefer it that way. I prefer that as kind of like a natural way of getting the heat out rather than reverse. You could argue that it looks better the other way around, but I think it will be better for cooling. I'm going to chuck all these cables through and out to the side and then I'll rework what I'm going to do with them after I've fitted it, everything. Actually I might um, debate whether to fit the power supply then the cables. Yeah, I think we need to fit all of our cables and then we need to fit the power supply. So let's leave the power supply out and do our cables first. All of our required uh, power connectors are in. So with the hard drive connector, because there was at the end of the connector, there was a Molex connector instead of a serial ATA connector. So I've just kind of gone from the power supply to the hard drive and then the end of the connector uh, out to the front case, just to kind of keep those uh, cables uh, again out of the way uh, inside there. Into the chassis. So so I'm not too sure how much space we're going to end up with. You can also feel the uh, cables kind of springing back towards the power supply. So I've tidied up the power supply cables as best as I could. Um, there's really not an awful lot of options for you in terms of uh, where you can put them. So I've just used one kind of big cable tire and tied them all in one big bunch um, here. They're quite close to the fan. Like I say, it's obviously going to obstruct the airflow, but I'm not too concerned because it's not really going to overheat. Um, in the future, we'll probably put a graphics card in there. I'll just have to kind of move everything along a little bit. I probably could have put them down the side where the uh, RAM slots are, but I didn't really want to push against any of the other components. So that's kind of how we've ended up. So I'm just going to put on the uh, hard drive plate along the top, refit the uh, case housing, and then we'll be good for the first power up. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with it overall. No major problems, just a little bit of a tight fit getting everything in there, but overall really good. So I'm going to do the first power up now and you can see that. Okay guys, so hopefully everything worked well. Um, obviously down on the floor, limited amount of room, working with everything. So this is our POS box that we've just built. I'm going to do the first power on and hopefully we should see a display on that monitor there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the first power on, then I'm going to do a part two which will be all the software configuration and all of that kind of stuff. A uh, reason being is because this video is just going to kind of run on and on uh, with um, all the hardware side of things. Um, so I thought what I'd do is break up the software side of things um, so there will be two separate videos. So if you're interested in setting up of Windows and the, the um, installation of the wallets and all that kind of stuff, um, watch the part two section. That'll be where I'll be covering all of those kind of stuff. Uh, but also uh, things like um, sound levels and uh, power usage, all of that kind of business. So that's all gonna be a part two and this will be the kind of the final wrap up for this part one section. So let's hit the power button, which I think is around here. Might help if I turn it on at the, uh, the rocker switch. And we have nothing, so super. Oh my God. I don't know why I get myself into this mess. Let's, uh, let's uh, see what the problem is. Okay, so in my infinite wisdom, um, I was trying to press the button on the side. Uh, there is a button on there, but it's not actually a button it wouldn't press, and it's because it's the hard drive uh, indicator light. So the power button is actually on the front. And uh, oh. sometimes I wonder whether I should share this kind of stuff with you guys or not, but anyway, so it appears that this is the power button, and it is. 
Um, so hopefully we should now get a signal uh, on the screen we have. So there is the BIOS um, and we've got a uh, CMOS fail. So that's probably just because of the first time that we've uh, used it. So I will continue on with that. So thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the part two.